How the heck are you everybody? I'm Fastidious, welcome to my channel and welcome to a nice little update video for Watcher of Realms. So if you guys are not on the Watcher of Realms official Discord, every once in a while, nearly weekly I think, they do a dev Q&A where we get to ask questions and the devs respond. Uh, there are lots of questions and a lot of answers and a lot of times it's kind of baloney but sometimes there's some good stuff. So we actually had some good stuff this time around. So there were 28 questions they addressed. I think 12 of them contained relevant information. So I'm just gonna skip to those and give you guys the quick hits, like a little recap of what I think you need to know, what I found interesting. I'm gonna try to make it as quick, as short, as clear as possible. So without further ado, let's get right into it. As you can see here, they say salute commanders, blah, 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 blah. Question one, I don't think there was anything interesting here until question seven. So if we go to question seven, better items to purchase using Epic Awakening tokens. Well, they're saying, yeah, sure. We're currently working on optimizations and aiming to make it avail available very soon. So it sounds like in one or two or three updates from now, we should see some improvements to the Awakening Shop. And I presume to the Awakening Shop in general, not just the use of Epic tokens, but hey, this is a great start. Pretty cool to see. On to question eight, something very cool something I'm very excited about. So legendary soul stones, it looks like we are going to get new ways and new features that bring us opportunities to earn legendary soul stones. So they say, thank you for your feedback commander. In the future, legendary soul stones will be accessible via new features or other sources. Right now, I'm pretty sure the only way to get them is in the higher level, the higher tier arena, not arena, guild boss chest drops. Um, I know I've never gotten anyone. I've talked with uh, Arcturus, who's been playing the game for over 400 days at a very, very high level. Go check out the Dragon Slayers community if you were interested more in that. But Arcturus said he's gotten two ever. So in over well over a year, he's only ever gotten two while performing at a very high level. So we definitely need more ways to get them. They shouldn't be, in my opinion, easy to get, but it shouldn't be that someone playing for well over a year at a very high level has only ever gotten two. Maybe the number should be like six or eight, in my opinion. So cool to see there's gonna be new ways. Uh, on to question nine now. Oh no, question nine is a nothing burger. There are a lot of nothing burgers in here, guys. Question 10, very straightforward, very cool. Arena, uh, the best chests you can get from Arena are those luxurious chests. Very often they give really, really underwhelming rewards. Just today, it's Monday, right? The Arena week ended and I got one huge stamina potion. Uh, so yeah, you get your ancient uh, summoning crystal, which is very nice. You get a couple other good things, but just some diamonds are great. I think it's like 600 when you do Overlord. But yeah, you get that chest and they're calling it a luxurious chest and it can be something as simple as 60 diamonds worth of stamina. I think we should definitely see better things. So they're saying we are planning to enhance the reward content as part of the arena updates and optimization. So it's very much on their plate. Pretty cool. All right, let's skip ahead. And I'm not dim discriminating against the Cyrillic here. They just, I think they maybe are in their answers. It seems like when the Russian people or Ukrainian or whomever, whomever is writing in Cyrillic ask questions, the answers seem to be worse. So not trying to call out the devs there. However, I don't know. The answers just seem like, thank you, we're considering it, and that's it. Uh, on to 13 here. So this is interesting to me. Uh, they're kind of talking about something else, about BP scaling in the arena and how it works with the opponents and stuff like that. But I'm really just gonna focus on the response. Uh, they say, thank you for your feedback, Commander. Arena matchmaking currently depends on you and your opponent's arena points and does not take your BP into account. Uh, it's a bit vague what they're considering arena matchmaking, but if you guys don't know, the strength of the enemies that you and your opponent face on like both sides defending your, your individual portals, uh, those enemies, their strength seems to depend on like an average between your and your opponent's BP, right? Um, I thought that was all but confirmed. It seems to me that they're saying this doesn't take BP into consideration. From my own testing, uh, you know, running like, you know, low BP comps to high BP comps, like relative to my account, I think it definitely takes into consideration BP. Maybe I'm misreading this, but it seems to me they're trying to say it only takes place arena points, which would be like your ranking points, how high up or down you are in the arena. I thought that was interesting. On to question 14. Uh, I'm not gonna get too high into this. This is coming from some super high end, super end game player. Apparently they're ranked number two in the whole world. And apparently they are in some crazy clan. So shout out to them, I guess. But they're complaining that there are too many bots. So I can see this one of two ways. I personally, in like the normal levels of Overlord, to my knowledge, I'm experiencing like no bots at this point. Nothing seems like bots. So I'm reading this as we're so, so high up, probably we're spending so, so, so much. We have no one to beat up on except for each other and bots. Um, 
that maybe is a failure, but it also might be a failure of some people rushing to the end game too quickly, them and their friends, and now the game doesn't really know how to manage that because what are they going to do? Feed people who are half their BP and then they get destroyed? I don't know. Um, I see, I do see the frustration, absolutely. But it is, I thought it was an interesting problem to address. Uh, on to question 15, which I think is much more interesting. Uh, it's pretty annoying to get to the forge, guys, right? You have to click on your hero, click on the forge, click on equip, then you forge, right? Stuff like this, quite annoying. Uh, apparently, pretty soon, we are just gonna get um, a gear related features, but also a forge button on the main page. So like in our camp, there should be a, you know, user interface portal that we can click on the way we can click on other things like heroes and click on things like that. We can just click on the forge. I think that'd be a lot more user friendly. Uh, pretty cool that that is coming. I think there's a lot of user friendly things in this game and it's important to see that they're continuing to think about this. Uh, question 17 was about something totally different. Uh, auto fight uh, in progress with risk of losing, blah, blah. But then, in their answer, they snuck something very very interesting in here. Thank you for your feedback, Commander. The warning has already been improved. Okay, great. Uh, but with the advent of our background running battle feature soon, that reads to me as not just like the low power mode, you know, so you don't actually see the screen like what you're seeing behind me right now as you watch me do some auto battles. But that sounds to me like you're gonna be able to do other stuff. So you can enhance gear while you have battles running or maybe do some arena battles while you're farming a gear aid stage. That is probably what I'm most excited about in this entire Q&A. So they kind of snuck it in there. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but I think that's crazy cool. Uh, 18, 19, 20, bunch of nothing. Uh, question 21, we're getting to the end here, guys. Uh, make impossible to fuse awakened heroes or fully geared ones with upgraded skills or ones with upgraded skills. Guys, you know, this is something near and dear to my heart after I fed my level 60 Nyx into my level one Nyx for an awakening. And apparently they're gonna look out for us dummies like me. Future updates will restrict gear equipped heroes from star upgrades or fusions. And I'm assuming upgrades as well will include awakenings, right? So <laughs> there's gonna be some idiot proofing for people like me. Uh, so that definitely caught my eye. 22 and 23 were big old farts. 24, they finally did an interesting response uh, to a Cyrillic comment. So shout out to the devs. I guess it took you only 24 questions. There's been like three other Cyrillic questions they basically ignored. Uh, something, something, something. Uh, I don't speak Russian or whatever language this is, this is. However, thank you for your feedback, Commander. We are consistently adding new rare heroes and will consider options for the sale and conversion of skill dust in our future plans. Two big things I wanna point out here. Let's start at the end. Uh, sale and conversion of skill dust in the future plans, that's huge. I mean, I think a lot of us that have been playing for a while have thousands of rare skill dust and nothing to do with it. There are so few rare heroes. I'm assuming that's what these guys were mentioning and saying, hey, why are you giving us so many rare, so many, uh, rare skill crystals and rare skill dust and no new rare heroes? And then they're saying, but let's go to the earlier part. We're consistently adding new rare heroes. They haven't added a single new rare hero, not once since Global. Um, I've gone through the entire, before this, I went through the entire test server. There's only three other rare heroes on the entire test server. So that includes everything from Forerunner, everything from Global, and everything in development. So this, to me, reads as a straight up lie. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. I would love to see more rare heroes. I'd love to see more epic heroes. There is only two epic heroes that are not currently in the game that are on the, the test server as well. I'll just tell you guys that. So it needs to not be one of those games that's just like only legendaries, only legendaries, only legendaries. You gotta keep it balanced and keep it interesting because there's always gonna be new players coming in and they shouldn't come into a hero pool of like a couple rares, a couple epics and 170 legendaries or whatever. So interesting interesting stuff. Sale and conversion stuff with skill dust. I hope that also applies uh, to some other things, right? Uh, you know, like uh, whatever, the legendary extract, the one below mythic extract, there's very little use for stuff like that, right? Um, as you stockpile that, there's a few things they could address there. Uh, we can go ahead and skip, uh, no, actually, let's go right here to 25. If you guys missed it, Dragon Slayer's Community actually showed this. It's already out on Forerunner. Uh, it's very cool, but there's gonna be like an in-game summon counter uh, that so you can track your pity very, very clearly, not just the way we do it now, kind of having to do it by hand. It will actually state into your pity and it will even show the heroes uh, from the video Dragon Slayers community shared, uh, it will show the heroes that you did summon by summon. So that's a cool way to track that. Um, I like that a lot. 26, we can skip. 27, very uh, patriotic guy here, talking about how amazing India is. I mean, it's true, that is an amazing nation. I just thought his, his patriotism was, uh, was noteworthy. 
Uh, so he's saying bring the game to India. I think that is super great. They don't address it, but yeah, why would you ignore such a huge market? More than 1 billion people. Uh, it would help all of us, right? Like a rising tide lifts all ships. Uh, suggestion two, 2x for gear farming. And suggestion three, increase gold return after selling gears. Uh, so they only address suggestion three and they say adjustments to the gear selling price will be made. As we know, they already increased it by 30%. Looks like we're gonna get more. They just directly up, directly said it, right? They didn't say we're considering, they said that they will be made. That's very cool. Uh, with suggestion two, that's something they addressed in the last uh, dev Q&A. So if you're familiar with a game like Raid Shadow Legends, it sounds like there's gonna be 2X increased drop rates on certain kinds of gear. So maybe like right now we have the tournament uh, for gear raid two, the vault in the sands, maybe it'd be like a uh, double chance to get cursed gear or something like that. That's what maybe we can expect in the future. And then finally, 28. Uh, this is something that apparently they're saying they addressed. I have not seen it at all. This guy is talking about something I've talked a lot about both in videos and on stream. It's very hard to read the damage numbers and the health bar, specifically in the arena, uh, specifically in like single target arena. I cannot see the health bar. I cannot see of the enemies I'm attacking. I can't see the health bar of the enemies my opponents are attacking. It's very hard to track. They say we've globally adjusted the base height of damage values displayed and further tweaked damage display on elite monsters. I have not seen that at all. So let me know guys um, if you've seen that in any capacity. That's been it for the dev Q&A highlights. Uh, I tried to keep it to 10 minutes. Looks like we're just over 11. Let me know if you wanna see more of this in the future. If you like the video, like it. If you wanna comment, comment. If you wanna share it with your mom, do it. Subscribe, I've been Fasidious. I'll see you in the next one. Fastidious.